evening, everybody. <laughs> um, uh, today is Good Friday, so wishing you a Good Friday. Today, I would like to touch on uh, one of the topics that I find that um, my per I personally find that is a very useful because sometimes when you are, your mind, you know, that you are sometimes in life that you see is when you meditate and it's very difficult and it's so very difficult to to be peaceful and your your, your heart your mind have a lot of conflicts you know lots of angers and a lot of hurts and i find that's one of these um uh contemplations and reflections on the, uh, one of these uh qualities that actually I find that is very useful to help us in, in life. So this is the, I'm today I like to touch upon this compassion. So because uh, sometimes like we think that, you know, we have these conflicts and um, actually the inner peace actually is within ourselves. And we look at the world and actually how we, how we re, uh, relate to the world actually is very much reflect to our inner world. The outer world, because this is how we feel, you know, when we have these hurts, harm, it's just some things that, you know, that we, we just couldn't be uh, a loss of uh, 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 pain and suffering in ourselves. And we find that it's just uh, someone have done us wrong, and we go on and on and on, and we couldn't forgive, we couldn't let go. So that's... Um, Compassion, actually, compassion is a very is a very good uh, uh, contemplation, and to develop this compassionate heart, actually, leads us give us lots of uh, happiness, and also calm. So, what is the definitions of uh, the Buddhist definitions of compassion? Is it that uh, that uh, you see a, a dog, oh poor thing, and this dog, you know, I take it home. You know, you feel pity for the dog. Is it this is what is meant by compassion? Or we get overwhelming, you know, that's, uh, oh, this, this, this poor thing, and then you get involved, and we feel so much pain. You know, I remember when I was in uh, Hong Kong, and one uh, lady, she spoke to us, and she said that in the early days, she used to practice compassion. And she finds that it's very difficult when she tries to develop this compassionate heart. And she finds that she's a bit overwhelming. And she's having a lot of pain. She feels sadness, grief. And she says she's, she can't. She has to stop that. So that's why then that is not really what is meant by compassion. Actually, someone is a you are truly compassionate. You are peaceful. You are calm. You're wise and you're happy. That is what is mean compassion. So if you are getting involved, actually we already get uh, involved, you know, become emotional. Then that is not compassion. That's why whatever practice that we take up, we always have to accompany by wisdom. So we cannot separate this uh, wisdom and compassion. Because a lot of people, when they come to listen to the Dhamma, they tend to swing into uh, to the other end, you know. So when they practice, uh, when they practice uh, uh, loving kindness, and they become loving kindness freak, and they practice generosity, they becomes generosity freak, and they, they they practice compassion, they become compassion freak. Even we have people come to monastic life. You know, they be, then because in monastic we have to keep keep this monastic rule, the vineyard rule. Then it becomes a vineyard freak, and causes of ourselves lots of suffering. Because I, I, you know, we have someone that she's she's a gen, she's a generosity freak, and then she like to offer lots and lots of things. You know, she have no saving for herself, nothing. So. Like for example, like sometimes like things uh, uh, at home like uh, uh, need to need to repair. She have no money to do that. So 
and we started to, t- to, to tell her that, you know, uh, the monastery, we, we, you know what to offer is the most important is your heart. It's not the things that you offer. You don't have to offer lots of things, you know. I said, it's no need. And she said, oh, it's okay. I'm living in the moment, you know. I just let go. I just give whatever. So I just live in the moment. Whatever comes to me, I just go according to my karma. This is not what the Buddha is teaching. The Buddhas never taught that. Actually, one of the suttas the Buddhas mentioned that, you know, that we need to have saving, you know, one quarter to put into a uh, saving for some, when in the future, what that we, we need, when we get sick, you know, we need the money for emerg- emergency use. And one part, you know, to spend, one part for investment, and one part to, to, to practice generosity. And not the use of all, because we tend to become, we swing to, to the other part because of we don't have the wisdom. That is the wisdom part. The wisdom is not the, the knowledge, it's not the IQ. It's the wisdom is the direct knowledge, knowing things as they truly are, through our own experience, through our own realization. It's not the IQ, it's not the, 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 the reasoning, the logic. And talk about IQ is remind me of a jokes that um, and there were three uh, lady and these three lady one is Russian one is American and one is blonde so three of them so the American said the, the, the Russian said we are the first one in space then the, 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 the American lady said we are the first one land on moon. Then the blonde said, so what? We are going to be the first one to land on the sun. <laughs> and the, the American and the, the Russian look at each other, they shoot their head. They think, that, oh, you're really silly, you idiot. How come you land on the sun? You'll be burned up. Then the blonde looked at two of them. No, I'm not stupid. I'm not silly. Look, we are going to go there at night. <laughs> so it's all right. So because if you don't have the IQ, it's fine. Because now they said EQ is more important than IQ. So if we can develop our EQ, so we really help us through life. Because IQ is only help us through the school, you know, you have to pass the exam, but EQ help us through our life. So EQ is much more important. So it's, it's okay if our IQ below average is fine. So, you know, there's hope because we can develop this compassion because compassion is one of these spiritual qualities the Buddha mentioned. That is the emotional side that is really help us in life. So, so it's, we have hope. If those the IQ is below average, it's fine. So now we have hope. We can develop this EQ. So EQ really help us. So according to the research, people having EQ, they are more successful in life than those having a uh, high IQ. Like uh, according, you know, most of these art, artistics, you know, child, they have very high EQ. But they, they can't manage the emotion. They don't have the personal skill. They don't have the personal uh, uh, interaction skill. They don't have the self. Uh, uh, those who do have this uh, uh, emotional intelligent EQ, they, they have this four ability. That is, they have the self-awareness, the uh, self-management, be able to restrain oneself, to know that this behavior is no good and that causes this problem, to be able to manage that. Uh, they have this self-discipline. And the other ability they have, that is to be able to, uh, to have this uh, so, um, uh, social awareness, to understand that you know, the other person, like uh, this person is, is upset, you know, this is not the right time to say something. So you have this social awareness. And you have this social management. You'll be able to, you know, to have this social uh, skill. 
So this is very important. So actually, all this, you know, actually is in this spiritual quality. So this is compassion. This is one of those. So that's why it's important. There is a lot of people tend to practice compassion, then move to the opposite side, and it becomes like you know, uh, 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 they criticize others and they think that the, the, the other people are not compassionate. I'm so compassionate, and it's remind me one of the incidents that happened uh, many years ago in London, and one of these. Uh, there's a group of these um, compassion freak. So they're so compa- compassionate to these uh, animals. So they love animals so much. So they, they, they have this self-hatred. And no, not self-hatred, they have this self-righteousness towards those people, the doctors that they, have a, they do this experiment. You know, they use these uh, 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 animals for experiments. So, so one of these group, they put a bomb, bomb under the, 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 the car of one of the doctors. This lady doctor, she's doing all the experiments using the, those animals. So there's so much hatred. And this morning, this lady doctors with the daughter, they went into the car and two of them been blown up, you know. They die. They kill. They kill this, you know. And the daughter is so innocent. And but people think that they're so compassionate. They have compassion towards the animals. Have no compassion towards the people. So they say it is. Sometimes we tend to identify ourselves that we are compassion. So sometimes when we have that, you know, when we started to get upset, when someone make me us angry. So when we are angry. We look at ourselves. So next time when we pay attention to our anger, how is it feel like? The heat, you know, the agitation, the irritations, you know, the burning, you know, boiling, you know, the kind of feelings. How is it like? So we, we pay attention. You know, we understand ourselves, understand our anger, look at our anger. Is it any different? We share the same experience, isn't it? With our enemies, those who upset us. So we have the same, same anger, but sometimes we tend to judge others. We think that it's happened to others. It's easy for us to judge, to say they are wrong. But we look at ourselves. We, just because we share the same experience, we share the same, we have the same suffering. So the more we understand our own suffering, the more we can understand others. We can become more, it's a, more compassionate. That's why we have to understand. This is what is compassion. Compassion has this openness. The open mind, you know, the care for everybody. And the empathy. And we have the understanding of others, people, position, situation. We understand the suffering of others because if we put ourselves on the other people's shoes, we understand how is it like. So if this is how we feel, so we don't want to, to do that to others, isn't it? They said the more we understand the suffering, the more we be able to understand the suffering of others. So we always have to start with ourselves, to understand ourselves, to look at ourselves. So actually... It uh, remind me of this um, uh, one of the, the story that um, uh, a little girl that um, is, a, is an article that was uh, um, written by a doctor. So he used to have all these stories, and one day, and he used to see a uh, morning that's a little girl about eight, eight years old. So. She's hanging around in the hospital. So this, uh, this, this, uh, this doctor said, why this little girl is yes, so She's supposed to go to school. Why she's hanging around? So he started to pay attention to this girl, and then he started to ask around, you know, the nurse, so what happened to this girl? So then he found out that this girl, that the mother has come to the hospital three times a week to have dialysis. 
So when the mother come for the dialysis, she can't go to she can't go to school. She can't because her mother, when her mother pregnant, her mother have this uh, high blood pressure. Then, then she have this uh, uh, causes her the kidney uh, uh, not functioning, and she have to have this dialysis, and it's also lead to other complication that she's become blind. And her husband couldn't cope with that because the wife with these conditions, with this illness, and with a little girl, and he have to work. So he ran away. He left the wife. So leaving behind this little girl, and she's blind, you know. She's, she, she bring up her, her, her daughter, you know, alone. So... And this doctor tried to talk to this little girl, you know, and asked how, how is she doing. And then she said, oh, while well, her mother having the dialysis, sometimes she go to the canteen to help to do some washing up so that she can have a bit of a meal to earn some uh, 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 a meal to eat for herself and her mom, eight years old girl. And just imagine, he, he was so touched. He said, "You know, eight years old girl, so, supposed to be in the in the in the in the in the parents, you know, arms, you know, that is 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 supposed to go to school, you know, pampered by the parents. But she's she's you know have to go out to earn her living, to earn for, to wash up, you know, to earn for a meal. So she's so he's." He start, started to talk to her, and then she 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 said that oh I can, she said I can wash clothes. I know how to iron. I know how to cook. You know she looked after her mom, eight years old girl, and but she said sometimes I'm a bit naughty. She said, and because I'm lazy, I didn't wash my clothes, and my mom smell that I'm smelly, and. I was beaten by my mom. So the doctors laughed. He said, okay. So he said, why don't you run if your mom hit you? She said, no, I, I, I can't run. So because if I started to run, my mom is going to chase me. If she started to chase me, she fall over. And it hurts my mom. It hurts my mom. It hurts me. Eight years old girl, have the compassion, have the kindness, the caring, the understanding that things hurts others, hurts ourselves. She can understand the suffering of her mom. Only eight years old girl. Sometimes like, we have this complaint about others. Others have done us wrong. We really ashamed of ourselves, isn't it, compared to a little girl, eight years old girl. They say is 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 that is how we 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 can see the suffering. We if we feel the suffering, we know the suffering of others. So we reflect on that. So it's things hurts ourselves, hurts others. Some things hurts others, it hurts ourselves. You know, same. We share the inner connectedness. We are not, you know, separate from other being. We all are inner connected. So the Buddha said. The reason why we not be able to 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 to, to free ourselves from the suffering, we wander in the the cycle of rebirth because we don't understand suffering. So when we understand suffering, then we free ourselves because because we don't understand suffering, we this is part of life. So lots of things happen in the in you know in, in, in our life we can't help it. Like we're getting old, we're getting sick. That's unavoidable. We can't avoid. But at least we we can change our relationship, how we look at life, you know, with kindness, with compassion. So when we when we understand suffering. Actually, this, this uh, 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 wisdom, this compassion, you have the wisdom that you understand suffering. When you understand suffering, you understand non-self. So when you see the non-self, you see that it's impermanent. 
So when we see the impermanent, there is based on that three characteristics, three based on this understanding. This compassion is based on that. So the more we can understand life, then we will be, become more at ease and at peace. We don't fight. So we know that this is just part of life. We, we accept whatever condition. We have compassion towards ourselves. Even we have compassion towards those they are not compassion. That is part of life. And I find that it's, it's, this compassion is, is a reflect on that is very useful because sometimes uh, from my personal experience that sometimes I find that even you try to use uh, loving kindness doesn't work when you are really in that uh, a boiling and you have lots of anger, when you are really agitated, sometimes you try to send loving kindness. It's very difficult. Just imagine someone really, you know, press a button and really, you know, uh, uh, causes you lots of uh, suffering and, uh, or being abusive to you and then you try to send loving kindness. I find that it doesn't work. I find, I try very hard, it doesn't work. And I would like to share with you my experience that, that, uh, that I have this experience that actually I work with that for 10 days. I couldn't, when I, every day, you know, I try very hard. My, my mind just keep, you know, so agitated and boiling. I, you know, cannot get to, a, I can, so I can't, very difficult to calm myself down. I find it very difficult because um, when I was in, uh, many years ago, when I was uh, still a lay person, where the, when I was in Thailand, so I, I used to practice a lot of um, uh, uh, solitude and seclusion by myself. And of course, when you are by yourself, it's so peaceful and calm. So I was so happy and so peaceful and so calm. And I was thinking that I'm such a wonderful person. I'm so peaceful. I'm so lovely. I'm so helpful. I'm, you know, I help everybody, you know. I'm so happy. Until one day, my teacher appeared. So this lady come to stay in the monastery. She having this, uh, she's a bit, have, she have this um, mental problem. So she following me everywhere, you know. The first day she come, she said, can I stay with you in your kuti? I said, no, no way. I said, I want to be by myself. I don't know you. I don't want to stay with you. She said, no, 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 I accompany you. You accompany me. We talk dharma. So I said, no, I do not need that. So she kept following me everywhere I go like a shadow. And I feel really agitated and irritated. And then she liked to talk nonsense, you know, talking all things that not related to the practice and really nonsense. And then she following me until a point that I can't stand. And I blow up. <laughs> and I look at her, I said, I said, you crazy woman. I said, you get out. I said, don't follow me. Leave me alone. I just want to be myself, by myself. I said, please leave me alone. And I said, you really crazy. I said, I don't want to see you anymore. Actually, the moment when I said that, I regret it. I know that it's being unkind. But that moment, I just could not hold myself that I really put it out that out of anger, out of agitations, that is unwholesome speech. And I was really regret. I regretted that I said that. But what can I do? Done. <laughs> you know? It's just like the water when you pour it out, it's out. I can't pull back. Oh, excuse me, that's not. I, 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 bring, I put it back, you know, I bring it back. No, I can't. So then I told myself, okay, I determined that no matter what, I'm not going to get angry. I'm not going to get upset. I'm going to restrain myself. I determined that I'm not going to get upset. I'm not going to, uh, uh, you know, because she tried to make me angry. You know, when I'm angry, she's very happy. You know, and you know what she does, you know, like for example, like uh, when we working in the kitchen, when I, I filled up those uh, 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 like coffee, tea, afternoon 